But our latest hour does come from football. We'll get back to the Correa story. The, the same week that the LA Rams were officially eliminated from the postseason race, we have been given an update on their damaged quarterback. Did you hear? Did you hear what has happened? Now, possibly not. Matthew Stafford, whose lips had been sealed on his long-term status in the NFL with whispers that he was contemplating retirement. Well, Correa has gone on the record. Not Correa, Stafford. He's gone on the record. Matthew Stafford's gone on the record here and has made an announcement. This happened on his wife's fledgling podcast, which apparently no one listens to. I'll explain... <laughs> I'll explain how I believe no one listens to this podcast. But anyway, uh, Matthew Stafford's wife, uh, I, I, imagine that. You get a podcast because your husband's in the NFL. I mean, my God. Anyway, all right, uh, here she is uh, with her husband. Uh, I wonder how she got him on the podcast. But here is uh, Stafford being asked about his NFL future. What a booking. What a booking. All right. A lot of people are asking this, which I already know the answer to, but retirement. Are you retiring? Oh, no. Okay, thank you. Sorry. I, I figure like... I say it, but no one listens to me. So I feel like coming out of your know. mouth. No, I think people are really asking it because I've been so emotional on this podcast about you. <laughs> <laughs> so that was 99% her. I think he said, oh, no, is wow. what he said, which might have been just, wow. why did I marry you? I don't know. All right. Anyway, wow, he, said, uh, he said, oh, no, uh, to his significant other there when I asked if he was going to retire. Now, keep in mind, Sean McVay, the Ram coach, said that he does not expect uh, Stafford to need any surgery in the offseason on his neck. So there is that as well as we discuss. The question on this one, Matthew Stafford saying that he's not retiring. Do you believe him or not? So I am a non-believer. Yeah, I know. I'm going to hell. Uh, but uh, with I've got stipulations on this. So I've got parachute, red-hot chili peppers, and flea market. And we will combine all of these things together, and we are going to make a damaged quarterback is what we're going to make because that's what the Rams have. So number one. Number one. Number one. Matthew Stafford is planning to run it back with the Rams, although he might not actually be on the field in 2023. Strategically, this is the only move you can make. I was thinking about this as I was wandering down into the studio here. And I was like, well, you know, Stafford, strategically, this is what you got to do. This is the public position that you're going to try to play and you're going to continue to play a wink, wink, nod, nod. It doesn't mean that he's actually going to go forward on the field and play, but You've got to protect the parachute in case you get kicked out of the plane. The golden parachute. Matthew Stafford has another 90 million smackaroos waiting for him. The Rams, they got so giddy after winning the Super Bowl, they handed out this giant gift basket filled with dead presidents, $130 million guaranteed to Matthew Stafford. And that was his bounty for the catastrophic success the Rams had in winning the Super Bowl, and so the balance of that is due over the next couple of years. So if you were Matthew Stafford, you make the call. You got $27.5 million guaranteed in 2023, $31 million guaranteed in 2024, and $32 million in 2025. That's a pretty, pretty, pretty nice incentive to attempt to come back and play. If you retire, you get nothing. So are you going to keep trying to play? The, the Rams are going to continue to cut cartoon-sized checks if you continue to play. Not only that, there is that Barry Sanders rule, which I believe is still the so-called Barry Sanders rule, uh, which I believe is still in play in the NFL, where if you get into deep water, if you retire unexpectedly, the CBA would allow the Rams to recoup some of the signing bonus the signing bonus was a gazillion dollars, so they would get some of that gazillion dollars back. Now, page two, how much more good football does Matthew Stafford have in the tank? So Stafford was an absolute environmental pollutant this NFL season. He played like a guy that had eaten too many spicy foods, like he had too many red-hot chili peppers, and he had that acid reflux 
right? a little uh, Californication, if you will. There, Stafford had a, a lump in his throat. He had the burning chest pain out on the field, regurgitating the football. And Stafford has played now 14 seasons in the NFL. He's made $300 million from mostly from the Lions, but also from the Rams. He turns 35 before next season. So I'm not putting a lot of faith that you're going to get much out of Matthew Stafford. He was a total washout in the nine games he played here in 2022. One game with 300 or more passing yards, two games with more than one touchdown pass, the misadventures of the Ram quarterback, defenders of Matthew Stafford have decided to give him immunity. They blame the offensive line, the injuries. Now, we don't. Uh, Stafford failed to spark the fuse in the L.A. offense, and so it's this guy's fault, that guy's fault. There were plays to be made, and he was in a coma-like state after the Super Bowl. Okay, so that's that's the reality. But now, final point, will the Rams... Will the Rams be all in? It's one thing for Stafford to say, I want to come back and play, and I need the money and all that stuff, and I get that, and he's going to be behind in schedule, and blah, 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 blah. But will the Rams be all in the Matthew Stafford basket? And the answer is they cannot be. If they're doing it right, they cannot be. Now, I'm a skeptic about the long-term viability of Stafford. It would be football malpractice if the Rams don't have a solid contingency plan in place, and John Wolford is not that guy. You're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. Baker Mayfield doesn't look like that guy either. Let's be honest here. He's terrible against the Green Bay Packers. He has a few more games to show that he's got a little bit of gumption and and to show that he's got a little something there. The Rams, though, have to pay a premium for a solid insurance policy. Otherwise, they will again be juggling live hand grenades on Sundays, I, they have to bring in reinforcements. As I said, fortify the roster and upgrade. And there's this defeatist attitude that that many have. Oh, the Rams are screwed because they have no first-round picks for years to come and all that. And it just shows you the low-information fan. They don't understand how this works. There's more than one way to peel an orange. And there's more than one way to build an NFL team and to say otherwise is nonsense. Now, the Rams, it's... it's more difficult, but it's not impossible. The Rams have to go to the flea markets. They've got to search lost and founds. They've got to repurpose handy downs and discarded players. And that's the secret. That's the secret, right? And practice wabi-sabi, right? You've got to find perfection in imperfect things. Do a little dumpster diving. And and people don't like to, to point this out because it's uncomfortable because they love the draft and they've decided that the draft's the only way to go. But the success rate of repurposing NFL players that were drafted by Team A and don't make it with Team A and then go to Team B and find success, the success rate of that is almost equal to the NFL draft. Like a fourth-round pick in the NFL or third-round pick, the chances of them succeeding versus drafting uh, you know, drafting that guy in the fourth round or getting a player – who let's say you're the Rams and a guy is let go by the Denver Broncos who was drafted in the third round, but then all of a sudden the light bulb goes off when he gets to, to La La Land, and, and so the, the odds are almost identical to that. But you're not supposed to say that because the draft is a big selling point, and that's the end-all, be-all, the NFL draft. 